All right, let's, when we're talking about hypothesis test, um, we're testing against, say, maybe the mean, pretend that is a good bell-shaped curve. <laughs> and so this is the value that they're trying to get us to believe. And when we do a hypothesis test, what happens is, you know, we get values all over the place. And so um, when we take a sample, we might get a value right here. We might get a value right here. And the closer we get to the mean of what they're telling us, okay, and this could also be a proportion, but the population parameter, I should say, but let's just call it the mean, the closer we are to this, the more likely we are to believe what they're telling us. Well, who decides what's close enough? That's where either the p-value or the critical value comes in. Most people like the p-value because all a p-value is is the probability, I believe, I believe, the null. That I believe what they're telling me right there, okay? Where the critical value, that you actually come up with a test statistic, and that's where you'll see, you know, these formulas like finding a z-score, and then you will standardize this mean to zero, and then let's say you get a z-score of, I don't know, let's say 1.54, okay? Notice that's positive, so it's definitely greater than um, zero, so it's positive. You can get z-scores down here, say negative 3.24, and that kind of stuff. What you do is you compare your z test statistic, okay, either one, you compare a test statistic to a critical value. And a critical value is found typically looking up in tables or using Excel based on an alpha, okay? So say, you know, whatever our alpha is, let's just say our critical value um, was 1.37 with this example right here. Notice that the 1.37 is like right here. So all of this we call our critical region. If we are in it, we reject the null. We're saying that's too far. However, if we had, you know, a test statistic of, let's say, 1.27, that would, would not be in the critical region and we would not reject it. But again, you know, all these critical values versus test statistics, that's confusing to a lot of people, so they tend to like the p-value. However, the p-value, you still have to get your test statistic, like say in Excel, and from that is where you compute the p-value, the probability that I believe you, okay? So let's, um, let's see if I can erase a whole bunch of this junk here and make it look a little bit better. I don't know that my, my normal curve is going to look any better. But so it, it's still the same thing going on. Okay, so we have our normal curve. We have our population mean that they're telling us. And so this alpha, let's say that the cutoff is 0 0.05. So that's actually our critical region. So the p-value, when you get that, we test the p-value against 0 0.05. If the p-value is greater, the probability, oops, that's an ugly alpha, the probability, my p-value, is greater than alpha, then that's going to be like, say, this area all here. So I believe you because I'm closer. So we check if the p-value is greater than alpha, we, f we fail to reject the null because that looks good. If we have a small p-value, meaning like, I don't know, 0 0.01, and that's less than alpha of 0 0.05, that's saying that's a small probability I even believe you, okay? So hopefully that kind of is a little better, uh, you know, helps a little bit, but definitely going through a hypothesis test and then trying to see do you reject or fail to reject is how typically you start to understand these p-values, critical values, test statistics, and all that crazy stuff. Hope it helps.